We're going to begin this hour with that new series. We call it Facing Facility, Facing Fertility, rather, where we explore reproductive hurdles and giving voice to the many women and men who suffer in silence with infertility. This morning, we're taking a look at the reality of in vitro fertilization, or IVF, as it's called. As many as one in eight couples struggle to conceive, either due to female or male infertility, or in some cases, both. Nikki Batiste talks with one couple who are four years into their IVF journey. Four years after they married, Kristen Connolly and Matt Smith were ready to start a family. But after a year of trying to conceive without success, the then 34-year-old saw a fertility doctor. What did they find when they tested your sperm? All of the most important factors were pretty low or just didn't hit the, the normal range. Matt had corrective surgery, but six months later, they faced another hurdle. Kristen's egg count was lower than expected. I was actually diagnosed with diminished ovarian reserve. So in 2020, they turned to in vitro fertilization or IVF. The process required weeks of blood draws, ultrasounds, and at-home hormone shots to stimulate egg growth. Mature eggs were then retrieved, fertilized with sperm in a lab, and monitored to see if they grew into embryos, which the couple then had genetically tested for viability. After four rounds of IVF, Kristen and Matt got their first viable embryo and their first chance at pregnancy. But when the embryo was transferred to Kristen's uterus, it did not implant. How are you feeling emotionally? Exhausted. Yeah, it was like a cycle. You'd be worn out, and then you'd get frustrated. They decided to try an egg donor. It's such a big decision. Was mm -hmm. it a difficult one? Oh, yeah. You know, what are people going to say about it if they find out that we used a donor egg? You know, I'm, you know am I going to relate with the child because it's not my genetics? With the donor eggs, Kristen and Matt were finally able to successfully transfer an embryo. But seven weeks later... I woke up in the middle of the night and knew I was miscarried. Their next two embryo transfers also ended in miscarriages. I think that was a hard pill to swallow that. And I think, yeah. I think we all sort of, why us? Then we started questioning, is this, should we be doing this? In addition to the emotional toll, IVF can also take a financial toll. Without insurance coverage, the average cost of one medicated IVF cycle is about $12,000. Have you had to pay out of pocket? I would say at least 80% of what we've done has been out of pocket. Kristen and Matt are not alone in their struggle. It's been quite a roller coaster, so I'm just trying to hold on to hope. Last August, I found myself in a place I never imagined I'd be, facing my fourth IVF egg retrieval. I got six eggs this time. I had seven last time, four the time before, and I think five the first time. My husband, Dean Simpson, and I are yes. desperately trying to have a second child. I've been recording our journey. So many people struggle in silence with infertility and never talk about it. We married at 36, but delayed starting a family as I switched jobs. I was at a pivotal point in my career, and honestly, I wanted to wait a few years before we started trying to have a family. It's the biggest regret of my life. At age 38, we got pregnant quickly, but then suffered a miscarriage. Pregnant again naturally, we had our son Bo when I was 40. Then at 41, another miscarriage. At 42, we started IVF. These are tanks where we maintain frozen eggs and embryos. In fact, your embryos are in this tank, number 59. Um, wow, it's making me emotional, actually. <laughs> Dr. Eric Foreman is my reproductive endocrinologist at Columbia University Fertility Center in New York City. A lot of people, including myself, maybe naively, think IVF is often successful, and that just isn't the reality. Yeah, I think that's a misperception. Even with our ability to get multiple eggs and make multiple embryos, most of them cannot go on and make a healthy baby, and so most IVF cycles are not successful. For women under 35, the chance of having a baby after a single IVF cycle is about 41 percent. That drops to around 29 percent between the ages of 35 and 37. And by age 42, it's down to just 9 percent. I don't know yet if it'll work, if we'll be able to have another child. Secondary infertility 
is very difficult and you know shouldn't be minimized for some women or couples even more difficult because they really want to give their child a sibling but I think it's a different type of experience at least you know knowing that it's possible after four rounds of IVF and genetic testing we had just one viable embryo which my husband and I transferred in November I've been feeling a lot of fear leading up to this day 10 days later we just found out that my pregnancy test is positive we're so grateful and in shock Soon after, the tiny heartbeat we had been hoping for. Yeah, so this will eventually, hopefully, be the nursery. Kristen and Matt say they will keep trying. I have one embryo for Kristen calling. Days before our interview, they did another embryo transfer. When you want to be something so bad, you know, you'll do whatever it takes. I hope, hope, hope this little embryo is the one. <laughs> Us too. Because I think we are tired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Weeks later, they got some good news. This is good. That's good. That's good. Okay. All right. A positive pregnancy test. Their latest transfer had worked. I just talked to Kristen and Matt last night. They are 13 weeks along, and Kristen is feeling pretty good. I am 22 weeks pregnant, um, and having gone through this, you worry every step of the way that it continues to go well. And there are just three points that I want to make. Number one, as we mentioned in the piece, IVS, IVF is extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. We were able to do it because I have good fertility insurance here at CBS, but it was never lost on me that so many people never even have the luxury to try. Mm -hmm. Two, I felt a lot of guilt going through this because we were going through it already having a child. Mm -hmm. And I would constantly think of couples struggling with infertility, struggling through IVF they for years and may never have yeah. one at all. Mm -hmm. And lastly, and this is really important for me, I pitched doing this for this Facing Fertility series to Shauna Thomas, our executive producer, after we had two failed rounds. And I said to her, no one talks about the fact that IVF does not work more often than it does statistically, and you only hear the success stories. And so what I felt was really important to, to make that point. Obviously, we're thrilled that it worked. We did not think it would work at that point. And also just to spark conversation, because so many people suffer in silence with yeah. not just IVF yeah. struggles, but infertility across the board. It's such an, such an important story. I didn't know what you just said, that most... No idea. Yeah, in many cases, IVF doesn't work. And I learned a very hard, painful lesson years ago. I would never do this now. One of my neighbors, you know, I was much younger, and we were talking about babies, and I said, well, what are you guys, what are you guys waiting for? It's easy. And she goes, actually, Gail, it's not. Yeah. It's not. And that was such a clawed, knucklehead thing to say, and I think people say that. I was, my attempt to be cute and funny... You just never know what people are going through. That's why I think these stories are so important. I told you that, Nikki, that when, when yeah. Marion and I decided to have a baby, uh, I just thought, well, okay, like, this is what happens. Yeah. And she now had to school cool. me on that. And I also told you how I learned from you and others as I was on this journey to becoming a father that so many of my friends, people that are in my family, are suffering in silence yeah. because they think that you won't understand. Yeah, and... So many people struggle, even younger men and women. And like you said, people don't talk about it. That's why we're here. Yes, that's good. And there's another point that we'll get into tomorrow as a part of our series where we aren't educated mm -hmm. about fertility and infertility mm -hmm. when we're younger. And so it, be, it can be a surprise sometimes when it's too late. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you're changing Nikki, that. Yeah, yeah, Nikki, thank you so much for taking us there, honestly. And it's a girl, Gail. I You've got on the girl. Hey. <laughs> I'm excited Lovely. with whatever you, we, Bo, and Dean grateful. add to the family. I'm so excited for you. And, and Bo's excited. And the other couple, too. Bo's excited. He tried to pour milk in my belly button. To <laughs> Bo's a doctor. Now, now we want to know what happens with Kristen and Matt, too. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And they, 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 they very much wanted to share their story yes. to spark conversation, too. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tomorrow, our Facing Fertility series follows the journey of a woman who froze her eggs when she was 33. Did your OBGYN ever talk to you about the option of egg freezing or about family planning at all? No, actually. It's always been interesting to me that they don't talk to you about it. In fact, they send you to a specialist. Another important story. She takes us inside her egg freezing process tomorrow.